What's up CNC woodworkers, Corbin here. This is the same bowl project as my last video, but making it in a different way using Vetric VCarve instead of Fusion 360. I'll have a link where you can download both of these designs and make it on your own CNC machine. My goal is to compare two different techniques on how to do two side machining and the two different types of software to see which would kind of work better for this type of thing. I know a lot more people tend to use Vetric VCarve than Fusion 360 because VCarve is just a little bit easier and a little bit more approachable. The typical Vetric VCarve way to do two side machining is to cut some dowel holes on the top of your workpiece and have corresponding dowel holes in your spoil board that are mirrored and match up when you flip the piece over. Now in deep carvings this presents some problems. When I cut my first bowl, the top operation was no problem. I flipped it over and did the back side and I got some burning on the deep parts of where it was carving inside. T typical long bits are about three inches in overall length and they have about two inches sticking below the holder. However, they usually only have about an inch and a quarter to an inch and three eighths of cutting height. This really limits how far you can go down before you have issues. The non-cutting area was rubbing on the edge of the workpiece when it went to do the full two inches of deep carving. Now I'll talk about how to solve this in a minute. The other problem are the hold downs. When I did my first test one, the tool holder came too close to my hold down tops and broke them off. Luckily they're just 3D printed plastic that I made and I could easily print some more, so it's not a big deal. But it can be a big deal if you're using some other type of hold down. An easy solution for that is just to make the stock piece a little bit larger and then you won't have any issues with collision with your hold downs. So my Fusion 360 version requires a jig and some double sided tape. The entire bottom of the bowl is machined away, which doesn't leave any area for clamping or to have some alignment holes. This means I rely on the jig for alignment and I rely on the tape for holding it down. The VCAR version requires spacing for the alignment holes, spacing for the hold downs, and spacing to ensure there's enough area around where the bit can get without actually hitting anything. My final VCAR version used a larger piece of stock to avoid some of the collision issues I was having, but I still had to solve the burning issue. I decided to simply do a profile cut around and just space it out a little bit further, but only go to one inch deep, which is no problem to cut. And then I could go ahead and do the 3D roughing pass and it would have enough clearance where we would not get any rubbing issues. This solution worked great and the 3D roughing and 3D finish tool pass had enough space to not do any burning or rubbing. So now let's get into how to make this bowl. I prep my stock, which is just gluing pieces together until I have a nine and a half by nine and a half inch square block that's two inches thick. The height needs to be pretty spot on because I use my CNC table as my reference point for both operations. There are ways to get around this, but this is how I like to do it because I have an automatic tool changer. I set up the stock with my 3D printed hold downs. I printed the set for an inch and a quarter stock, but I can make it work for the two inch piece by simply using a three quarter inch piece of MDF below it and that gives me the two inch height that I need. The roughing pass is done with a quarter inch spiral up cut bit. Description will have a link to it. The same quarter inch bit that was used for the roughing pass drills the alignment holes. One tip that I'll give you is if you don't have an automatic tool changer or an ATC, then you want to ensure you touch off your bits in the exact same spot again and again for consistency. After the roughing is done, I do a finishing pass with a quarter inch ball nose bit. At this point, I can remove the workpiece and drill the bottom side alignment holes into my spoil board using the same quarter inch spiral up cut bit or a quarter inch drill bit. Then I insert quarter inch dowels into the workpiece and align it into the holes in my spoil board. I clamp it down like I did before. As before, I start with a quarter inch spiral upcut bit for the roughing pass. The profile bit clearance area is cut first. Then the rest of the bowl is roughly machined out with the same bit. I switch to my quarter inch ball nose bit and do the finishing operation. The bowl is removed from the table and I noticed I had a little bit of area that didn't get machined 
and I later fixed that in the vcar file by just moving the model down a little bit. I used my multi-tool to cut out the bowl from the tabs. And at this point I had to do a bunch of sanding. I had to sand off those tabs, which were probably a little bit on the thick side, so I will probably thin them up in the file that I release. Then I sand the bowl. I had to start with 100, and then went on to 150, and finally 220. Off camera, I do like to spray it down a little bit with some water, let it dry to get fuzzy, and then sand the fuzzies off with 220. This just produces a better finish for bowls that might get wet and washed. And finally, I can either put on Osmo Top Oil, which I prefer, and use on some of my first bowls, or I might just use a Danish oil or some natural finish. So let's compare these two techniques. Vetric V-Carve, two-side machining with alignment holes, versus Fusion 360 using this jig to do alignment and double-sided tape. So I love Fusion 360 because it has great machining simulations. It can detect if there's going to be a bit collision or if my holder is going to collide with something. And this might have helped me prevent some problems where I was doing a really deep carve. I'm not entirely sure, but the simulations really are essential for me. And the simulations that are in vCarve just aren't as powerful. That means it's hard for me to make a new project in Vetric vCarve and ensure it's not going to have any types of collisions or burning without actually first testing it out. As I mentioned before, I had to use a larger stock for the Vetric vCarve version. In the Fusion 360 version, I used a 8 inch by 8 inch square, which is about the smallest size for this bowl. The vCar version, I used a 9.5 by 9.5 inch square, and it's just more stock that kind of gets wasted. May not be a big deal. So the Fusion 360 version requires more steps and more materials. You have to have double sided tape, you have to have the same hold downs, and you have to create a jig with some MDF. This just takes more time. And the vCar version, it just required the hold downs and that's it, uh, and some dowels. So it takes less time for the actual setup and machining because of that. Now the vCar version left me with a bowl that had to do a lot more sanding and finishing on. I had to sand off the tabs, and vCar always leaves rough edges around the sides. It's just a ramification of how the program works, which is kind of unfortunate. And so it just requires more sanding. The Fusion 360 version, I can machine all sides of the bowl completely, and depending on my toolpath speeds and feeds, I could potentially have a bowl with virtually no sanding. So which process do I prefer? I prefer the Fusion 360 version, even though it takes more time to create the jig. But once I make the jig, I can replicate the project a lot of times without having to do as much work. So Vetric V-Carve might be better when you're trying to do a one-off project and sanding the tabs off isn't a big deal. So what should you use? You should really use whatever software you're familiar with. If you're familiar with Vetric V-Carve, then use that because it will work. If you're familiar with Fusion 360, then use that because it actually works better. If you want to create a single one-off, then Vetric V-Carve might be faster to get your design done. If you want to create a lot of the same thing, then having a jig and creating a Fusion 360 might be a little bit better of an option. So thanks everyone. You can download these files and give it a try yourself. Uh, I have both available for sale for just a small price. And in each one you download, I'm going to include both versions from now on. So you can download one and then try the other or vice versa and see which one you prefer. Thanks everyone.